The McLean sisters rose to popularity in the 2010s as a girl group signed to Disney's Hollywood Records. But before that, Sierra, Lauren, and China had already stolen the hearts of many people as the daughters of Idris Elba in Tyler Perry's 2007 film, Daddy's Little Girls. From then on, the trio started successful careers in entertainment, both as a group and individually. Especially the youngest sister, China Ann McLean, whose beaming personality caught the attention of many Hollywood producers. She became a Disney darling, appearing in some of the network's top-rated shows and recording songs for some of their soundtracks before landing her own series. China's success also helped the McLean sisters as a music trio. Her impressive resume made her one of the most famous child stars of the 2010s. But the tragic passing of a close friend changed her outlook on her career in entertainment and also led her to a spiritual awakening. She used social media to share her views and the word of God. But her religious beliefs were met with heavy criticism from fans of hers. This is what happened to the McLean sisters and what they're up to today. I have gotten bullied more for talking about God than I ever have in my life. Public school wasn't this bad. Like for real, I did not expect to have people straight up cussing me smooth out for doing these videos about God. And I've tried to do it respectfully. I don't know why I was talking about that though. It literally says in the Bible, it talks about how spreading the word of God is difficult. It's not Sierra, Lauren, and China were all born in Decatur, Georgia to parents Michael and Chantel McLean. The eldest daughter, Sierra Aelina, was born on March 16, 1994. The second born, Lauren Alyssa, was born nearly three years later on January 9, 1997. And the youngest daughter, China Ann, arrived on August 25, 1998. They also have a younger brother born in 2001. Their father, Michael, was a music producer and songwriter who worked on Solange's debut album, along with Angie Stone's The Art of Love and War album, while their mother, Chantel, became a writer and actress known for writing episodes for Tyler Perry's Meet the Browns and House of Pain. The girls developed their love of music by watching their father make music in the studio. Michael began producing music for the girls, and in 2004, China, the youngest daughter, was discovered by a music executive who encouraged director Rob Hardy to audition her for his feature film. She landed the role of Alexis in his film The Gospel, and her two sisters, Sierra and Lauren, appear in the film as supporting cast. The role caught the attention of filmmaker Tyler Perry. All three of the McLean sisters showed interest in being singers and joining the entertainment world, but China showed the most potential to become Hollywood's next tween star. In 2006, she auditioned for the Disney TV movie Jump In and ended up landing a starring role in the film. But China passed on the role because they felt she had a better offer, Tyler Perry's House of Pain on TBS. She played the role of Jasmine Payne, the daughter of CJ and Janine. Hear that? I am a genius. <laughs> no, you're not. Yes, I am. Sierra also makes an appearance on the series. In 2007, the McLean sisters all starred in the Tyler Perry film Daddy's Little Girls, for which they released the single Daddy's Girl. Big up to your daddy, y'all. Big up to the one who gave you your last name. They all played the daughters of Idris Elba and had major speaking roles in the film. I think it's time for y'all to go to bed. No, please. Five more minutes. No, yeah. again. But Disney still had China on their radar. And for the next few years, she would make guest appearances on shows like Hannah Montana. I used to like carrots, but then you said you hated them, so then I hated them. Then you said you liked them, so do I like them now or not? Of course. Carrots are wonderful. Well, why'd you say you hated them? Were you lying? Uh. China and Lauren even appeared on the Jimmy Kimmel show, playing the roles of Sasha and Malia Obama. And China appeared alone in an episode of NCIS. In 2009, China landed the starring role as Janet in the Disney Channel pilot Jack and Janet Save the Planet, alongside future co-stars Sierra McGormick and Jake Short. Unfortunately, the pilot was not picked up and never aired. Around this time, 
The McLean sisters were regularly uploading videos to their YouTube channel, performing covers of songs. But the best was yet to come for the three of them. Things really started looking up for China's career in the 2010s. She started the decade off by playing the daughter of Chris Rock and Maya Rudolph in the 2010 comedy film Grown Ups. She later reprised her role for the second film in 2013. She had a role in the sports film Hurricane Season alongside Forrest Whitaker and Taraji P. Henson. China also had recurring roles on Disney Channel shows like Wizards of Waverly Place and The Jonas Brothers Show, where she is featured on the song Your Biggest Fan alongside Nick Jonas. The McLean family packed up and relocated to Los Angeles from the suburbs of Atlanta, and Michael and Chantel started prepping their daughters for superstardom. In November 2010, Disney announced a live-action comedy series created around China and her personality titled Ant Farm. The show was created and executive produced by Dan Siner, who previously worked on The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. He said, The girl had so much confidence. She can nail a joke. She can sing. She can play instruments. It's like China was some sort of child prodigy. And that's when it hit me. Why not build a show around a child prodigy? Someone who's got all the natural talent and ability, but is still challenged when she's sent off to high school at the age of 11. End quote. Ant Farm followed China as a middle school music prodigy who gets into a gifted program named Accelerated Natural Talent at the local high school. She, along with her fellow ants, must now navigate the halls of high school. In addition to China, the cast includes her previous co-stars Sierra McGormick and Jake Short, along with Stephanie Scott, Zach Steele, and of course, guest appearances from Lauren and Sierra. The series came at a time when executives of kids' channels were eagerly trying to diversify their roster of talent by casting minority actors in leading roles. We already had actresses like Zendaya on Shake It Up, Coco Jones who was making appearances on several Disney shows, Symphony Miller on the short-lived Nickelodeon series How to Rock, and Kiki Palmer on True Jackson VP. Well, the show is about an organization in a high school called the Ant Farm, or Ant Program. Ant stands for Advanced Natural Talents, and everybody in this program is very gifted in whatever it is, mathematics, music, I play a musical prodigy. But everybody in the program is really young also, like 11 and 12, and the high schoolers do not want them there. They think that they are terrible and ruining everything there is about high school. So we have to maneuver our way through and get out safely. And my character, China Park, she doesn't care what the high schoolers have to say about her. She is going to make the best of the experience. Gary Marsh, the president of entertainment for Disney Channel, told the New York Times, She is probably the most talented comedian we have encountered in 10 years. But there is something that she was born with that allows her to be very humble. Her parents were also warm and loving and caring and involved. You would be shocked to know how often the opposite is true. End quote. Ant Farm premiered on May 6, 2011 with nearly 4 million views, and the series ran for three seasons. Sheesh! New Disney Channel comedy Ant Farm premieres Friday, June 17th at 8.30, 7.30 Central on Disney Channel. But with all eyes now on China, her parents wanted to make sure she didn't fall victim to Hollywood and become another teen star who spiraled out of control. So they sought advice from Selena Gomez's parents. Michael said, our family is extremely close-knit, and the minute her mother and I or her older sisters sense the slightest whiff of diva behavior, we will jump all over it." End quote. Lauren and Sierra performing their version of Jingle Bell Rock. Let's hear it for the McLean sisters. China landing her own show meant more opportunities for the McLean sisters to showcase their music. She signed a solo deal with Hollywood Records and also with Sierra and Lauren as the McLean sisters. China recorded and composed the show's theme song, Exceptional. And the group released the two songs, Perfect Mistake and Electronic Apology for the Ant Farm soundtrack. All songs from the album were featured on the show, and it also included songs performed by other cast members. In late 2011, China released the song Calling All Monsters as a single, which topped Radio Disney's Top 30 countdown and also charted within the Hot 100 on Billboard. Uh, 
Lauren and Sierra both guest starred in the music video, which garnered over 50 million views over time. The McLean sisters and China as a solo artist did many pop-up performances to promote their music, like Disney Park's Christmas Day Parade in 2011, the Houston Rodeo as the opening act for Big Time Rush, and the White House Easter Egg Roll in 2012. In March 2012, the group wrote and recorded the song Rise produced by their father Michael, and it was used as the promotional single for the Disney nature film Chimpanzee. The McLean sisters' music also appeared on the soundtracks for Shake It Up, I Love Dance, Secret of the Wings, The Sparrows, and Tinkerbell. As for China as a solo artist, she performed at the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, riding on the Homewood Suites float, singing her song Unstoppable in 2011, and landed the opportunity to sing the theme song for the Disney Channel children's television series Doc McStuffins. By the end of 2012, Billboard named her the sixth best-selling artist for digital kids songs. China received an NAACP Image Award nomination for outstanding performance by a youth for her performance on Ant Farm, along with a J14 Teen Icon Award nomination for Icon of Tomorrow. Aside from her own show, China made guest appearances on various reality shows and starred in the film How to Build a Better Boy. China also added voice acting to her resume by lending her voice for programs like Doc McStuffins and VeggieTales, as well as the films Bilal, A New Breed of Hero, and Sheep and Wolves. In 2014, China hopped on board with the Descendants franchise, both as a voice actress and live action. She also recorded the track Night Is Young for the soundtrack of the first film and the animated short form series. Her song What's My Name with Thomas Doherty and Dylan Playfair for Descendants 2 reached number 61 on Billboard's Hot 100, and it became a certified gold hit in the United States. China was also a part of the track It's Going Down, which is another gold single that charted within the top 100. Meanwhile, Sierra and Lauren were both finding solo work as actresses. In 2015, Sierra starred in a Lena Waithe pilot for Showtime. Then in 2016, Sierra landed a recurring role on the Lee Daniels hit television series Empire as the singer Nessa Parker, a protege of the character Shine, who signs a recording contract with Empire and is also Andre's lover. For the series, Sierra sang and recorded music for the soundtrack, and she remained a part of the cast for two years. I Rock your curves and waves, you so fly. Lauren McLean also did voiceover work for Descendants Wicked World as the character Freddy before landing a role in the film Beer City 3 in 2016. Then she ended up landing a starring role in Step Up High Water, the television drama series based on the Step Up film series. It premiered in January 2018 and she got to showcase her dancing skills. Growing up, I was very, very shy. And I always said, I'm not a dancer or I can't dance. My sister used to tell me, you should stop saying that because you can. And, you know, I would never give 100% for fear of not being accepted or for fear that people were going to think about me what I thought about myself. I dance because now I'm not afraid to. My name is Lauren McLean, and this is my dance journey. But later in the year, Lauren announced her departure from the series without giving any explanation. And by the last portion of the decade, China had already landed the role of Jennifer Pierce in the DC Comics superhero television series Black Lightning. China was still doing really well for herself and showed no signs of slowing down. But that was until something really tragic occurred in her life. On January 6, 2019, actor Cameron Boyce passed away suddenly in his sleep from an epileptic seizure at the age of 20 years young. 
He was China's closest friend, and she was just 10 years old when they first met while working on the 2010 comedy film Grown Ups. The two remained in contact up until China joined Cameron and the rest of the cast in Disney Channel's Descendants franchise years later. A few days after his death, China tearfully reflected on their friendship. I know that it's taken me a while to get on and say something. Um, I just. <laughs> I had to step away from my phone. Um, sorry for the people that have contacted me that I, it, well, I was really late getting back to, if I've gotten back to everyone. I just needed to step away from my phone and definitely be off of social media and the internet. I just, seeing the, the headlines and stuff was just too hard. I couldn't do that. Um, but now I'm, I feel like I don't really believe any of this is actually happening, I think. I think that my mind is just kind of shut down at this point. So I'm just kind of feeling a little numb, just like a little bit um, empty, like just going through the emotions and just like, I'll never again have a friend like Cameron. It was around this time when China cut her hair off to begin her journey of self-improvement. She was also dealing with the insecurities of having acne, so she often hid behind her hair. For Teen Vogue, she said, It really did change my life. It gave me this feeling of freedom that I hadn't felt previously. The only feeling I felt that compares to that type of freedom is finding God and building a relationship with Him. I never would have cut it off when I was younger for a few different reasons. It was a security blanket to me. I was a black girl with long hair. It was down my back, and I always had people commenting on it like, Is all that your hair? It's so pretty. But at some point, I realized that I was hiding behind it for that reason. So it was holding me back. I felt in a lot of ways, emotionally, spiritually, and just from doing some of the things I wanted to do when I wanted to do them." End quote. It's very obvious that Cameron's death inspired China's path to being a more positive version of herself and made her question her career in Hollywood. But her newfound spiritual awakening would end up rubbing a lot of people the wrong way. In late 2020, she announced her departure from Black Lightning, despite the show being on its final season. China never gave a reason, but said she would be focusing on other projects and will only be doing God's work from now on, without elaborating on what the latter means. What I did know and have known, along with the rest of the cast, since before we even started shooting this season, is that I am leaving the show and was leaving the show. This was going to be my last season, regardless of if it went on or not, for different reasons that, to be honest, I don't want to go into. I just want y'all to trust me on it. There's been a lot to happen over this quarantine. These things are real. These people that are dying in the way of the world now, and all this is an illusion. It's an illusion. This, this industry, for what it is, and everything that people look to and praise. It's not important. God is moving me in more than one way than just this show. It's bigger than this show. I'm, I'm doing God's work now. And I'm not doing anything else. <laughs> I'm just gonna put it plainly. I'm not leaving because I had a terrible time working at the CW. In 2021, she started posting content across her socials, sharing her religious views, testimonials, and to denounce the entertainment industry. Her posts were met with backlash and people accusing her of being judgmental towards non-believers or people who subscribe to different ideologies, using analogies that were confusing, and offending other religious groups by implying that the Christian God is the only God. Have y'all ever heard of the theory of general relativity? It's what Einstein is famous for. In his calculations, he started to realize that the universe was not eternal. It had a beginning. Now this leads us to the law of causality. Everything that came to be needs a cause. Personal entity that is capable of existing outside of time, space, and matter. 
that can't be nothing but God. And for people that are like, okay, well, how do you know that it's like Christianity's God? There's only one God, but don't just take my word for it. Go look into it for yourself. One more thing, evidence is not a substitute for faith. Following God is not a matter of evidence or proof. It's a matter of the will. You have to want to do it so you can have the peace that you're looking for. And if you don't want to make that choice, no amount of evidence is going to convince you to. You have to want to. I'm going to tell you a little secret. This building that I'm in right now built itself. Do you believe me? You don't? Why? Have you ever met the builder of this building? Seen the builder of this building? Do you know their name? If you believe someone built this building, why? And guess who else you can't blame? God. Because I've heard so many people say, no, I don't believe in God because he ain't never tried to show me no sort of sign. Really? How'd you come in contact with this video? Just say hypothetically for a second that God doesn't exist. I'm not saying that people that don't believe in God are not capable of living moral lives. I would never say anything like that. The point of this video is questioning what the foundation for morality is, objective morality. Her most controversial video was her thoughts on the entertainment industry negatively depicting God, specifically Lil Nas X and his Montero music video. There's a lot of confusion about the way God is represented by people versus who he actually is. Comments like the one on top of Lil Nas's video, they often turn into back and forth conversations about religion. Christians against the gay community or Christians against everyone else. When it's really not about Christianity or religion at all. The truth is that God exists. I don't believe in God because a religion tells me to. I know God, we have a relationship. Like I have a relationship with my mom, dad, my sisters, my brother. So when God is represented badly by a Christian or by someone that's been hurt by a Christian, it really makes me sad because it's not who he is. And that behavior also drives so many people away from getting to know him. Entertainment industry, it's about influence. There is a reason why you see people dressed up as Satan full-on visuals of Satan, people dressed as Satan, dressed as a demon, got upside down crosses all on their clothes or pentagrams on their clothes. People think that this stuff is just a game. No, there's a, there's a reason why the entertainment industry is doing that, y'all. They know good and doggone well that God exists. They also know that Satan exists. They're just counting on the fact that y'all don't know that. But the video shows him getting stoned to death for being gay. He then starts ascending up to heaven before sliding down to hell, where he's seen depicting the devil. The video is a satirical representation of how the LGBT community is viewed by religious groups. He revealed in a press release that the final scene is dismantling the throne of judgment and punishment that has kept many people from his community from embracing themselves out of fear. So China's comments about God being misrepresented didn't really make sense to people because Lil Nas's video didn't focus the attention on God. People called out China and other Christians for completely disregarding the bigger message of the video and only paying attention to the alleged sins of gay people and things that aren't important, while repeatedly remaining silent on crimes committed by church leaders. Ironically enough, China followed it up with a video about not judging others. Another topic people have called religious groups out for. Judge the law, you are not keeping it, but sitting in judgment on it. There's only one lawgiver and judge, the one who is able to save and destroy, but you, who are you to judge your neighbor? In October 2021, China, Sierra, and Lauren made a remake of her 2011 hit song, Calling All the Monsters for Halloween. Fans called the actress hypocritical for portraying the same imagery she condemned just months ago. But it seems like she's since pumped the brakes a little bit on the religious videos due to the backlash, and is now focusing more on comedic and fun content. It's very common for people to turn to spirituality or faith as a source of light when they're grieving or recovering from a traumatic event. So China was probably just using social media to share her spiritual awakening to the world as a way to cope with the pain of Cameron's untimely death. But it backfired. I miss Cam a lot. Uh, it's hard every time I see his face and it's going to be difficult. I have I had no idea about his medical condition. I didn't know, guys. So it hit me out of nowhere. He was just, I mean, <laughs> I'd known him for so long. I'd never kept a relationship with somebody over, you know, 10 years like that. And to see him go when he was younger than me, it was just like, I don't even know what to say about it. I've had all these really mixed emotions recently. I don't know. It's been really 
it's been really difficult, but I miss him a lot and I love him and that's never going to change. She told Teen Vogue, Cameron was my first time really coming in contact with death when it came to somebody I really loved and knew closely. I didn't really know how to handle it. It was just like he was here one day and gone the next, and I had to wrap my mind around the fact that I would never see him in this life again. I'm still dealing with that, to be honest. I don't think I'm ever going to not deal with that, but I adore him. I love him. I still do. I always will. I have stories I want to keep to myself, but I don't know if I'm going to tell anybody. But I know that he's around. I'm proud of the life that he lived, and I'm pretty sure that everybody who knew him could say the same thing. But I mostly find myself thinking about his family because they lost something that the rest of us didn't. I was so tied up in working, 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 and getting ahead. And I was so tied up in that because I really do love acting. I don't like this industry, but I love creating things, creating art. And whether it be acting, singing, dancing, painting, sketching, sculpting, I love all those things, and I do them in my free time. So I just think Cameron's death made me step back. And now I don't live for those things anymore. I don't live for, let me make sure I accomplish this and let me work, 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 work. Now I just focus on the things around me and focus on this moment and put it on God and my family and whatever happens with this industry happens. I'm just gonna keep creating things, end quote. I have gotten bullied more for talking about God than I ever have in my life. Public school wasn't this bad. Like for real, I did not expect to have people straight up cussing me smooth out for doing these videos about God. And I've tried to do it respectfully. I don't know why I was shocked about that though. It a lot of China's views are questionable and made a lot of people uncomfortable. China is clearly dealing with something she's never dealt with before and doesn't deserve to be bullied. China revealed that the McLean family is working on a production company and the trio returned from their music hiatus with their single, My Sanity. Lauren's most recent role is in the slasher film Haunt, where she played the role of Bailey, and she currently has a TikTok that focuses on beauty-related content. Sierra starred in the dance film Honey, Rise Up and Dance with Tiana Taylor in 2018. She also starred in season two of Netflix's American psychological crime thriller Mindhunter. And since January 2020, she's been playing the starring role as Grace Ryder in the Fox drama series 911 Lone Star. You all might know me from a little film. I don't know if y'all know it. It's called Descendants. I don't know if y'all know. It. Okay, okay, good. Well, I am here to tell you that the Descendants story is about to continue. As for China, I guess we'll have to wait and see what she decides to do next. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, like this video, and subscribe to BFTV for more content.